Slide 1. Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange Basic Health Data Standards. This is Lecture F. This component, Networking and Health Information Exchange, addresses what is required to accomplish networking across and among disparate organizations who have heterogeneous systems. As one might imagine, this topic covers a lot of territory fraught with new topics and a lot of acronyms. Our apologies, but that's what it is. We suggest you keep your glossary beside you as you study this material. Unit 4 covers basic health data standards and consists of six lectures. Over these six lectures, we will identify the set of standards necessary to establish semantic interoperability. Lecture F presents three related document standards that are in major use globally today. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, Basic Health Data Standards, are to understand why it is necessary to use a common set of data elements with common names to be able to exchange and understand data from other places, understand what is meant by semantic interoperability, understand many of the sets of controlled vocabularies in use today, how they are used and who requires their use. Slide 3. Additional objectives for this unit, basic health data standards, are to understand the use, purpose, and interrelation among sets of controlled vocabularies in use today, identify the more common controlled vocabularies in use today, ICD, CPT, DRG, NDC, RxNorm, and Loink. Identify the more common controlled vocabularies in use today. SNOMED, MEDSIN, MEDRA, Nursing Terminologies, MESH, and UMLS. Understand data elements, attributes of data elements. Slide 4. Additional objectives for this unit, Basic Health Data Standards, are to understand the contribution of the Master Meta Dictionary of Data Elements to semantic interoperability. Explain how data structures can be built from basic data components. Explain how templates and archetypes facilitate networking and information interchange. And discuss clinical data architecture, CDA, continuity of care document, CCD, and continuity of care record, CCR standards. This lecture is the last of the series and focuses on a higher level of data structures. Slide 5. The CDA is a document markup standard that specifies the structure and semantics of clinical documents. The architecture should impose minimal constraints or requirements on document structure and content required for exchange. The CDA can include text, images, sounds, and other multimedia content. A CDA document can exist outside a message. The architecture specifies the schemas required for exchange. The CDA typically contains observations and services of a specific patient. The current version is Release 2, R2. We will begin by defining the term health. We often think of health as the absence of disease, but this is a somewhat narrow description of the term. In 1946, representatives of 61 countries attended the International Health Conference in New York to ratify the preamble to the Constitution of the World Health Organization, which is the specialized agency of the United Nations that deals with global health. The WHO definition of health is that health is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Thus, illness represents a state of poor health. Slide 6. This slide presents characteristics of the CDA. Persistence continues to exist in an unaltered state for a time period defined by local and regulatory requirements. It may or may not be important, depending on what happens on the receiving end. It can be stored as a persistent document, or its contents can be extracted and included in an EHR. Stewardship is maintained by an organization entrusted with its care. Its potential for authentication is an assemblage of information that is intended to be legally authenticated. Context establishes the default context for its contents. Wholeness means that authentication of a clinical document applies to the whole and does not apply to portions of the document without the full context of the document. Human readability means the contents can be read by a human. Why is this important? 
CDA can include both structured data for input into EHR in systems that have a structured EHR, or for systems that are text-based, can include human-readable narrative that can be directly displayed. In the absence of interoperability, this still provides a method for sharing data. Slide 7. The CDA specification is richly expressive and flexible. CDA uses XML as the markup language. It is based on the HL7 reference information model, and it uses the HL7 data types, which are consistent with the ISO data types. Data elements derive their meaning from the HL7 RIM. CDA uses HL7 data types. Document level, section level, and entry level templates can be used to constrain the generic CDA specification. Slide 8. The CDA allows a cost-effective implementation across a wide spectrum of systems, promotes longevity of all information encoded according to this architecture. It enables a wide range of post-exchange processing applications. It is compatible with a wide range of document creation applications. CDA documents are human-readable using widely available and commonly deployed XML-aware browsers and print drivers and a generic CDA stylesheet written in a standard stylesheet language. The architecture must be scalable to accommodate fine-grained markup, such as highly structured text and coded data. The CDA promotes exchanges that are independent of the underlying transfer or storage mechanism. Slide 9. A CDA document is wrapped by a clinical document element. The major components of the CDA are a header and a body. The header includes all data necessary to identify the document, sender and receiver, date and time, and other data discussed in detail in a following slide. The body contains all the clinical data. The CDA is expressed in XML. The document wrapper is the XML tag clinical document with the ending tag clinical document. The body is wrapped by the tag structured body. Slide 10. Note the syntax for the XML markup language. An XML tag is expressed as tag. Data is identified by the data element name. Data has a value. These fields are identified by the XML tags. Each entry has a start tag and a stop tag. An example is start, code, code equals 11488-4, stop, code. Nested structures are indented to make it easier to see the structure of the content. Programs can check syntax, conformant document, to make sure all beginnings have an end and that structures are intact. Slide 11. This slide shows a graphic of a complete CDA. Note the sections of document, header, body, section, entries, and external references. The header will be discussed in detail in the next slide. Body. The body contains the clinical report and can be either an unstructured blob or can be comprised of structured markup. A structured body, which is wrapped by the structured body element, is divided up into recursively nestable document sections. Section is wrapped by the section element. It can contain a single narrative block and any number of entries, zero to many. It may have external references. Narrative block. The CDA narrative block is wrapped by the text element within the section element and provides a slot for the human-readable content needing to be rendered. External references. External references refer to things that exist outside the CDA document, such as some other image, some other procedure, or some other observation. Wrapped by the external observation element. These sections may repeat. Slide 12. This is the structure for the header. Author, confidentiality, data enterer, human language, informant, legal authenticator, participant, record target. The header sets the context for the entire body. However, structure can be changed within the document or for a section of a document. 
For example, the header can set the confidentiality as public, but within the document can set confidentiality to private for an indicated section. Slide 13. This slide shows the major components of the CDA with the XML tags in place. Creating an XML by hand will consist of putting in the specific tags, data names, and the data. Sections would be repeated as necessary. CDA conformance specifies the principles governing the representation of the narrative block, conformance requirements on the part of originators when populating the block, and recipients when rendering it. Within a document section, the narrative block represents content to be rendered, whereas CDA entries represent structured content provided for a computer. CDA entries encode content present in the narrative block of the same section. CDA external references always occur within the context of a CDA entry and are wrapped by the reference element. The CDA entry that wraps the external reference can be used to encode the specific portions of the external reference that are addressed in the narrative block. This hierarchical structure reflects the structural diagram on slide 11. Slide 14. The CDA specification permits the definition of many documents and identifies them by assigned codes. Sections within the document can also be identified by codes. Thus, it is possible to differentiate a consultation note CDA from a discharge summary CDA because the two will have distinct document codes in the document instance. An HL7 template provides a formal mechanism to say that a particular consultation note or discharge summary must contain certain sections, or that an assessment or plan section must contain certain observations. The CDA requirement for human readability guarantees that a receiver of a CDA document can algorithmically display the clinical content of the note on a standard web browser. CDA Release 2, with its blend of narrative and CDA entries, presents new challenges to this requirement. Slide 15. This example shows the use of rendering tags, in this case bold, to enhance the presentation of the data. Slide 16. This slide illustrates the use of a section code to identify and specify the content of a section equals past history. If there was no past history, that section would be omitted. Slide 17. The low ink terminology set includes low ink codes for CDA documents. Examples include 28568-4, visit note emergency department physician. 34862-3, admission evaluation note, inpatient attending general medicine. 11488-4, consultation note, setting, provider. Slide 18. The continuity of care document is the union of the ASTM CCR standardized data set that is used to constrain CDA specifically for a patient summary document. The approach taken in the development of CCD is to reflect the CCR requirements in a CDA R2 framework and to do so in such a way that CDA is constrained in accordance with models being developed by other HL7 committees. This process has helped accelerate convergence within HL7 around a common clinical statement model, leading to closer collaboration with several domain committees, such as results, family history, allergies, problems, and medications. Slide 19. The sections of CCD have been extended beyond the CCR and now include payers, advanced directives, support, functional status, problems, family history, social history, alerts, allergies, adverse events, medications, medical equipment, immunizations, vital signs, results, procedures, encounters, and plan of care. Slide 20. This slide shows a sample CCD. The section shown is the results section and provides the result for a hematology test. In this example, both low ink codes and SNOMED CT codes are used. The date and time of the test are included as part of the result section. Slide 21. 
Another sample of a CCD section continues. This section provides laboratory results for a battery. Slide 22. The primary use case for the ASTM CCR is to provide a snapshot in time containing a summary of pertinent clinical, demographic, and administrative data for a specific patient. The CCR provides a patient health summary detail. It is a flexible document and can contain whatever the sender wishes. It provides relevant and timely core information about patients for exchange among patients. The CCR is available from ASTM at a cost. CCR uses the XML syntax. Slide 23. The CCR content includes demographics, diagnosis, problem list, medication, allergies, insurance, and care plan. Compare this content with the content of the CCD. Slide 24. This concludes basic health data standards. The increased power of these structured documents to enable interoperability holds great promise for HIT. The structure might be considered complicated, but the content is simple, data elements with XML tags. The structured narrative section of the CDA clearly provides a gradual pathway from unstructured free text to highly structured data. The capability provided by this technology opens a new opportunity to exchange data on a significantly elevated level in which true information is exchanged. Internationally, the CCD is becoming the exchange document of choice.